time to get around the grounds now on BBC Two and on the BBC HD channel. The latest match reports with Mark Chapman. And final score. And welcome to BBC Two viewers here on Final Score. You've missed two hours of intriguing action and insightful analysis from Martin Keown and Gary Pallister. Plenty more from them in the next hour. We're here with you right the way through until half past five to bring you all the results, the reaction and even some championship goals. There are seven Premier League games today. We've had one result already. Came at the Emirates. Arsenal beating Blackburn by seven goals to one. Elsewhere, Manchester City-Fulham is the tea time game. Norwich have just taken the lead against Bolton. Wolves have come from a goal down to lead QPR 2-1. Uh, Gibral Cisse sent off, though, for Mark Hughes' men. Stoke down to ten men as well. Robert Huth off for them. Sunderland lead through a James McLean goal. Swansea were a goal down at West Brom, but they've turned that round and lead 2-1. Danny Graham getting their second. And it's goalless at the DW Stadium between Wigan and and Everton. We'll go around all the ground soon, get more detail on that. Some particularly testing Premier League matches coming up. Was this an even more important three points today for you? Well, uh, for us, uh, it's important we know uh, that we have some catch-up to make, so the, the points, as you say, are important, but the consistency will be uh, vital for us. And I would assume, like all master goal scorers, Thierry Henry will be claiming the seventh goal. Well, uh, theoretically, it's his last game at the Emirates to score in the last minute. We, this guy was really made for the history of this club. It's turning into a very bad afternoon for Blackburn. Thrashed at Arsenal. Wolves are winning. And now at Wigan, Damien Johnson. Wigan lead by a goal to nil. It's a bizarre own goal from uh, substitute Phil Neville. The ball squirmed off his foot. Spinning towards Tim Howard in the Everton goal, and it spun out of his grasp and into the net. A precious goal for Wigan. It's been an awful game. Few chances at either end, but Wigan have a priceless lead. Carlisle have equalised against Chessfield in League One through Ben Parker. John Eustace's second of the afternoon means Watford a 2 0 up on Barnsley. Let's get details of Wolves taking the lead at Loftus Road from Jonathan Ledger. That man, Kevin Doyle, second half substitute, has changed the game in Wolves' favour. His cross set up Jarvis for the equaliser in the first minute of the second half and now his neat turn and shot from O'Hara's cross has given Wolves the lead and it could well keep his manager Mick McCarthy in his job after that horrendous defeat in midweek at home against Liverpool. Rangers had threatened to overrun Wolves in the first half. Zamora and Cissé were supreme up front. Zamora scored on his debut, but Cissé is no longer on the pitch. Sent off after 36 minutes for grabbing Roger Johnson round the throat. He's off, and Rangers have never been a, a proper team since then, and they're struggling. Down to 10 men, and now trailing 2-1. Talk to Gary and to Martin in just a moment. The only positive for Blackburn at the moment this afternoon is that Bolton are losing. Andrew James. Yes, Norwich City won Bolton nil. Andrew Sermon with a goal just a few minutes ago, Mark, for Norwich City. One or two questions had been asked in the week whether they were on the slide after that midweek defeat at Sunderland. They had plenty of chances in the first half to score, not least Sermon who hit the bar, but he made no mistake in this second half as the ball came in from the right. Wheater and Rio Coca failed to clear it, and Sermon and snapped up the rebound, lashing it uh, into the roof of the net. All this after Norwich lost two centre-backs to injury in the first half. Whitbread uh, having to go off, so too Ayala, and neither of those injuries involving other players. Uh, but Norwich really have kept their nerve. They've sent Morrison on now to play alongside Holt. They're going for the win. Bolton have Kevin Davis on, but it's Norwich City who seem to have steadied the ship. Norwich 1, Bolton 0. 
If everything stays as is in the Premier League, Norwich would be ninth this evening with 32 points. And just behind them, in 10th on 30 points, would be Swansea because they're winning at West Brom. Steve Lee. Yes, uh, West Brom 1, Swansea 2. West Brom blown away literally in a snowstorm by a resilient Swansea display. Fortune put Roy Hodgson's uh, side ahead just after the break left, unmarked at the far post from a corner. But Swansea, with just one win on the travels, that down the road at Villa, blitz West Brom with two goals inside 10 minutes. It's the first goal from Gilfie Sigurdsson from Taylor's Cross and then Sigurdsson curled in an excellent uh, cross from himself and Danny Graham steered it into the net. Nathan Dyer should have added to Swansea's lead and we've had Odom Wingy missing the kind of uh, goal which you, you want the ground to open up in front of you. That was a terrible miss. Charles just had a shot saved. It's, we could have a grandstand finish here but at the moment it's West Brom 1, Swansea 2. This afternoon, the Britannia Stadium is a winter wonderland for Sunderland, for James McLean, but not for Ivan Gaskell. Yeah, 12 minutes to go, and uh, I have to say, it's become increasingly farcical here at the Britannia Stadium. Full credit to all concerned, the supporters, the, the players and managers and officials, of course, for keeping this one going. 12 minutes left, boys, um, but Sunderland will be happy to see it out now. Stoke down to 10 men, Robert Huth sent off in debatable circumstances, it was a reckless lunge, yes. Was it a red card? That debate will continue to simmer. But it's made a difference. Woodgate's come on at the back. Stokes' uh, attacking options, though, of course, more limited. And then Sunderland took the lead just on the, on the hour mark. James McLean kept his footing in increasingly precarious circumstances. Composed finish underneath Sorensen. And this is a real test of perseverance now for all. 12 minutes left, a blizzard here. You can barely see the lines around the pitch. Will they finish it? Well, Martin O'Neill certainly hopes so. 1-0. And it was 1-0 in the Championship at the Cardiff City Stadium last time with Jason Mohamed, but the high-flying home side have been pegged back. Absolutely, Mark. How many times have we said this? The corner came over from the right-hand side, punched away by the Cardiff City keeper, David Marshall, chested down by Kevin Phillips, controlled it beautifully and volleyed into the top corner just when Cardiff City were getting in control after Joe Mason had put them in front. Kevin Phillips has scored 1-1. 11 for the season for Kevin Phillips. Hmm. That is, the, that is the goal of an experienced goal scorer, isn't it? Beautiful finish, just yeah. helps it over all the body of players in the way. He just does it time and time again. He seems to be getting better. Chappers. There was no panic to it. It was a very mm. controlled finish. Everybody, the body's in front of him, just yeah. takes it down on the volley and he guides it into the far corner there. Great finish. We'll have those goals for you later on, actually, on final score this afternoon. If it was uh, calm from Kevin Phillips, it was pure chaos from the Phil Neville own goal at well, it's one of the most bizarre goals yeah. of the season, I think. It's a, it's a ball played into the box. Phil Neville uh, tries to get a foot on it. He, he, he only catches part of the ball. It spins, but it's a really exaggerated spin. It, 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 I don't know if it's yeah. hit a divot as yeah. well, which is exaggerated, but Tim Howard's going along with the ball. It spins, but it's almost yeah. like a, a leg break. <laughs> and it goes back into it, the goal and makes a complete fool yeah. of Tim Such Howard. a deviation. I mean, you see the goalkeeper, people might blame him, but it's unbelievable. I mean, yeah. Wigan rooted at the bottom of the table. They needed some luck, and that's a mm. huge slice of luck there. We don't blame Phil Neville, though, do we? Because he does a lot of work for the BBC and for Five Live. So it was... <laughs> well, he just got his foot in a way. So we don't blame defenders here. No, no. <laughs> <course>. Certainly <laughs> never blamed you for anything, honestly. Uh, into the Championship. There was an early game there. It involved the leaders, West Ham. They took on Millwall in a local derby. And Rob Nothman can tell us what happened. A valuable win for the leaders in the aftermath of that midweek thrashing at Ipswich, all the more so after the early sending off of captain Kevin Nolan. It was a two-footed tackle, a player of his experience should know better. Carlton Cole headed in from one of those set pieces, so beloved by Sam Allardyce. Liam Trotter volleyed Millwall level, but after Ford's weak punch, he'll claim he was impeded, Winston Reid blasted home West Ham's winner. Once again, the Hammers were not a thing of beauty, but the circumstances dictate guts and organisation today and Big Sam will be pleased his play is delivered. Raider Johnson has scored for Sheffield Wesley. They were a goal down to Yeovil a year since Gary Megson took over at Hillsborough. That could be the perfect present for him. They lead 2-1. We are going to go next to Wigan. Home side 1-0 up last time with Damian Johnson but the scoreline has changed. It's 1-1, the substitute with virtually his first touch of the match, uh, Victor Anachebi with a near-post header. 
It was actually uh, a corner that was cleared momentarily, whipped back in again by Baines. And there was Anna Chabi with a near post glancing header past Al Habsi, all square. Good header, that. Well, I mean, it's a great ball in. Mm. Baines has whipped that in with power and pace. And then, really, the first head on it scores. And, you know, yeah, I mean, he's got across the defender there. Great finish. A couple of important goals recently for Victor Anachebe. He's, he's kind of been sort of left out in all the talk of Everton strikers. Got the winner at West Brom, mm. didn't he, just before mm. the Shown character, hasn't he? Shown good character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's easy to sort a little bit, I think, when things aren't going right for you. But he's, he's, he's come good in the last few games. Uh, Ross McCormack has got his 14th league goal of the season, his 15th overall, and Leeds lead Bristol City by two goals. Now, Bristol City down to nine men at Ashton Gate. Two red cards for them this afternoon. Back to the Premier League. Norwich against Bolton. Andrew James, the home side, close to doubling their lead. Well, doubling, trebling, quadrupling even, Mark, since the last time you were here. It's uh, really been a succession of missed chances for Norwich City. Just a few moments ago, Grant Holt was in a great position, decided uh, not to go for goal and pass the ball. It went out wide to Morris and he uh, to uh, Pilkington, who could have been in an offside position. He played into Morrison, who was, and Bolton got it clear anyway. Prior to that, a couple of other chances uh, for Norwich, one involving Holt, the other with Holt setting up Morrison. They could have been 4-0 up by now, Norwich, uh, but as it is at the moment, Bolton still in it. It's Norwich 1, Bolton 0. Blackpool came from a goal down during the week to claim three points. Are they at it again, Jason okay. Mohamed? Mark, they've been terrific since Kevin Phillips' sublime finish got them back into this game. They've been absolutely terrific. And Matt Phillips, who's been absolutely fantastic this afternoon, has just fired past David Marshall. Chaos in the Cardiff City defence. They did not clear the ball. It fell to Matt Phillips. He drilled it into the bottom corner. Fair play to Blackpool. They've been absolutely fantastic this afternoon. They lead 2-1. We're going to have to go back to the Britannia Stadium because it, it may be the age of Martin and Gary, I don't know, but they're struggling to see the ball here, <laughs> Ivan Gasker. I'm here and, honestly, I keep losing it. It's that bright, luminous yellow ball, but it, I've never seen a game being played out in conditions like this. I was warning of this early on and I perhaps uh, um, was quite early in suggesting the game might not finish and all credit to everybody that this game looks like now it will. But if it was like this at the start, I guarantee to you they would not have played it. It's That's how bad it is. The ball is starting to slow up in the conditions. It is difficult to see it. Footing is becoming increasingly treacherous and uh, I'm certain I've seen three snowmen on the pitch <laughs> um, it, is, it is impossible to see the ball isn't it I mean, I mean listen all credit to the players mm. you know I know they get their paid well but they really have had to go at it today in really terrible conditions um, you know Hoof getting sent off earlier in the match very dubious Martin Atkinson won't be pleased with that when he sees it afterwards I'm not sure there was really any contact Okay. Uh, Carlisle were a goal down to Chesterfield. They've turned it round. Francois Zoko, six minutes ago. Carlisle two, Chesterfield one. And there's been another goal at Carrow Road. Andrew James. It's the second one for Norwich, and it's all over now, surely. Bolton's uh, defence breached once again. This time, though, Pilkington making no mistake. Caledon Bogdan in goal had a couple of efforts at to trying to keep the ball out as it was turned in towards goal by Russell Martin. Good initial save from Bogdan, but the defender slow to react. Pilkington was quickest, and Norwich lead Bolton by two goals to nil, Mark. Wayne Hennessy has just made a tremendous save from Adel Tarapt at Loftus Road. Wolves still lead 10-man QPR uh, by two goals to one. We'll be back to Jonathan Ledyard very shortly. The early game in the Scottish Cup, though, was between Inverness, Caledonia and Thistle and Celtic. It was a win for Neil Lennon's men. And the details are with Roddy Forsyth. Bone chilling conditions in Inverness didn't curtail an absorbing contest that ultimately saw Celtic comfortably into Monday's draw for the next round of the Scottish Cup. Mind you, midway through the first half, Cali Thistle looked the more likely to score, and Forster had to get down fast in his line to scramble Nick Ross's stinging shot clear. But with no danger threatening, Terry Butcher's players cut their own throats. They allowed George Samaras a free sight of goal. He snapped it up with an angled delivery whose curl saw it come off Johnny Tuffy's gloves and into the net. It was the same again after the break when David Proctor let Gary Hooper squirm inside him and then he was judged to have fouled the Celtic striker for a penalty kick coolly converted by the hoop skipper Scott Brown to guarantee that Neil Lennon's side would stay on course for the Scottish domestic treble.
And last year's runners-up look like joining Celtic in the next round, don't they, Ian Turner? They will be. We're in the final minute here. Motherwell led 5-0 at half-time. Morton have been good in the second half. Motherwell have only scored one in the second half. That threw Jamie Murphy. That added to his one in the first half. Haley's also got one. Hutchison, Oyama and Law. It's been a good performance for Motherwell. 6-0 they lead. Jermaine Beckford sent off for Leicester at the Amex this afternoon. It's now 10 aside. Brighton uh, reduced by a man as well. Matty Sparrow sent off. We'll hear about that shortly. Back to the Scottish Cup. Dave Donaldson watching St Mirren against the Division 1 leaders, Ross County. St Mirren 1, Ross County 1. We've got about three minutes plus stoppage time remaining here. Both sides really going for it. Chances at either end. Colin McMenamin probably wasting the best of those, hitting the side netting when clean through. He's been replaced. It's St Mirren 1, Ross County 1. Let's find out about Matt Sparrow sending off, shall we, Mark? Bishop. Brighton nil, Leicester City nil right in front of the referee it was it was Sparrow, Matt Sparrow it was a nasty challenge on Lee Peltier uh, referee Andy Warmer, no hesitation, straight red, 52nd minute Leicester were down to 10 men, Jermaine Beckford for a rash challenge on Lewis Dunk, but this after the assistant referee didn't raise his flag entertaining second half all Brighton, some terrific saves from Schmeichel, the best denying Buckley the ball bounced back into Buckley's path and the ball bounced just wide of Schmeichel's goal. The clock is ticking down. It's end to end, nil nil. We've been on the BBC HD channel all afternoon as we are every Saturday from half past two. And I think, Paul Addison, I've only spoken to you twice at the Riverside. There's not a lot happened in the Middlesbrough Palace game. Mark, I don't have an awful lot to say now either. It's nil nil. But I tell you what, Palace are the better team here by far. Middlesbrough are really struggling. They're down to the bare bones with injuries. And it is showing. Palace may have felt they could have had a penalty midway through the second half. Joe Bennett brought down Wilfred Zahar right on the edge of the penalty area. Referee Mark Haywood gave Borough the benefit of the doubt, but it's Zahar attacking and shooting again now. Takes a deflection and goes to safety as far as Borough are concerned, but it is the home team here who are hanging on. It's nil-nil. All over at Motherwell, they've beaten Morton by six goals. Still, they're into the last eight of the Scottish Cup. Game of the day in the Premier League in the three o'clock kickoffs is at Loftus Road. It's one side, then the other on the attack. Jonathan Ledyard. Absolutely, and it's still not going to finish just yet. We've got another three minutes, and I'd say there's some stoppage time to go as well. Rangers completely winded by that Matt Jarvis goal after 46 minutes, and then Kevin Doyle giving them the lead after 71 minutes, meaning that Wolves had come from absolutely nowhere. They were spread eagled in the first half with Cissé and Barton and Zamora running the show until, that is, Cissé was sent off. But they've recovered in the last five, ten minutes. They've had chances, three of them for Tara, one for Barton. They're coming forward in waves. They got Hulse up front instead of Zamora, but they've yet to get that equaliser. Mick McCarthy is pacing his technical area. He's only got a few more minutes to go, but QPR on the attack. Just doesn't go for you, does it, when you're bottom of the whole of the Football League in Scotland? East Stirling have conceded a last minute penalty to second place Stramra. Two all now there, Christopher Aitken converting the spot kick. We're going to go to Burnley next. A late, late goal at Turf Moor of the home side equalised. Richard Askham. Yes, they have equalised, Chap. a tremendous goal as well from Jay Rodriguez. All his own work. He drove into the penalty area. A couple of little jinks onto his right foot and bent the ball past Joe Lewis and into the corner of the net. Burnley have an equaliser after Peterborough took the lead, deservedly so, in the first half through Paul Taylor. And with a few minutes left, Burnley... Now have that equaliser, and it's one apiece at Turf Moor. Has the former Everton striker Nick Chadwick given Plymouth some hope? They've got one back against Southend. Remember, if Paul Sturrock's side, which is Southend, win that game, they'll go top of League Two this evening. It's the only game taking place in that division. And Barnsley have got one back at Vicarish Road. Andy Gray with that. Watford 2, Barnsley 1. The goals are raining in at Cardiff City Stadium. Blackpool 2-1 up last time with Jason Mohamed. What's the score now? What a performance from the Phillips boys. We've had one from Kevin and Matt Phillips has just raced through, shrugging off Andrew Taylor, the Cardiff City left-back, to side foot past David Marshall. It has been an unbelievable fight back from Blackpool. Joe Mason put Cardiff City in front on 59 minutes. We've had three goals in the space of 11 minutes. Blackpool are about to beat Cardiff City by three goals to one. Not many teams come here and outplay Cardiff City but they have just done that. Wonderful performance from Ian Holloway's team.
Oh, needs a glass of water, does Jason Blackpool as it stands going fourth this evening. They'll just be two points behind Cardiff in third. And there's been a late, late goal at Brighton. Mark Bishop. A very late goal indeed. Brighton won. Leicester City nil. A minute from stoppage time. A great cross from Vincenti out on the right. It was a beautiful, beautiful pass right down over to the far part. Schmucker was beaten in rush Will Buckley and hammered the ball into the back of the net. All this after two red cards in the second half. Sparrow, the last one to go after a late challenge on Peltier. And then in the 52nd minute, Beckford for a rash challenge on Lewis Dunk. It was down 10 men apiece, but it's Brighton who are going to take three points. They lead by one goal to nil. West Brom need a late goal to get back on level terms with their visitors as it stands. Ones are going to get their second away league win of the season. Steve Lee. It's still West Brom 1, Swansea 2. Albion laying siege to the Swansea goal in a snowstorm with the Smethwick end absolutely covered now with snow. They've had a great chance from Fortuna a few moments ago. Odin Wingy missed an open goal, but it looks like Swansea are going to inflict another home defeat on West Brom. West Brom took the lead for with Fortuna. Goals from Sigurdsson and Graham give Swansea the lead here. We're in added time. Look like they played some good stuff in the second half, Swansea, mine. Yeah, Sigurdsson as well on loan. Mm. Uh, looking very good, isn't he? He uh, scores one and, and provides the second one. Um, yeah, Swansea looking good. I mean, we said about their away record, not very good, but if they can get another win today, then uh, 30 points they'd be on, Chappers. He's Icelandic and, and used to the conditions, I would imagine, out West Brom. <laughs> Unlike Ivan Gaskell at the Britannia. Yes, yeah, I've, I've got some ice cubes uh, going nicely next to me here. Uh, they started the afternoon out as water, and I've got to say that th this is an extraordinary day uh, on which to try and play football, uh, but they've managed it. We're about a minute away in the three minutes of out of time from uh, another famous Sunderland win, and uh, it, it, it perhaps will go down as an intrepid victory in these uh, snowbound conditions. James McLean's goal just on 61 minutes looks like being the difference between the two. Martin with yet another win. There goes the whistle. I thought if I spoke long enough it had come. Martin O'Neill and Tony Pulis battle through the flakes to shake hands. The play Players deserve great credit for getting this game on and battling through it. And nobody deserves greater credit than Sunderland and Martin O'Neill, whose run, extraordinary run, continues. It's now 22 points from 10 games since December the 11th. They win it at Stoke, and not many could say that. Now wish me luck getting out of uh, the car park and on that long drive home, but even more so, those Sunderland fans. Good luck to you. As you see, it's just gone through on the video printer. Plymouth have come from two down against South End. It's now Plymouth two, South End two. This is like going back to the old days looking at, looking at these pictures, isn't it? Well, it is for Sunderland fans, the way that they're winning games at the moment. McLean was superb for the goal as well. What a find he's been for Martin O'Neill. Bursting into the box, could have gone down, but he, uh, he had the energy and he had the quality at the end of it to put it, tuck it into the corner. Great goal. It says a lot about the character of Sunderland. One of the last places you'd want to go on a day like this would be Stoke City. And, uh, you know, Sunderland a couple of months ago, you probably wouldn't expect them to, uh, to win that game. They've, they've showed great character. They've played together. tremendous determination throughout their team as well today, yeah. I must say. Only four games have gone on in League One today. Carlisle have beaten Chesterfield by two goals to one. Sheffield Wednesday have beaten Yeovil 2-1. In the Scottish Cup, there are 15 places in the Scottish hierarchy between Aberdeen and Queen in the south, and yet that has finished one all at Pitodry, and it's all over at the DW Stadium. Damien Johnson. Yeah, all square here, Mark. Wigan almost won it with a bizarre own goal from Phil Neville. Uh, he got a touch on Jean Beausejour's cross. The ball spun viciously. Everton keeper Tim Howard completely fooled, and Wigan had the lead with the clock ticking. Everton started with new signing Nikita Jelovic on the bench, but it was a, another sub, Victor Anachevi, who uh, rescued them. A right wing cross from Leighton Baines, and there was a Nigerian striker that guided it past Al Hapsi. Neither side could uh, muster the grandstand finish. It was a poor game, point share, not really good enough for Wigan. What an afternoon for Neil Redfern and Leeds. They've won 3 0. D Morgan, you're welcome with champagne in the dressing room. <laughs> Uh, Wickham have beaten Tramis, so they're off the bottom of League One. It's uh, now nine against ten at the Amex. Leicester down to nine, and they trail Brighton by a goal to nil. And it's another three points for Paul Lambert and Norwich City in the Premier League. Andrew James. Yes, it's finished. Uh, Norwich City two. 
Bolton Wanderers nil and Norwich City getting back to winning ways. One or two felt perhaps after that midweek defeat that uh, things could be going slightly wrong here. Well, Paul Lambert's men have shown that that simply isn't the case. Andrew Sermon got the goal in the second half after hitting the bar in the first half. And then uh, Pilkington with the second goal to round it all off. Bolton simply didn't have an answer. They tried to keep them at bay as long as they could, but Norwich were just too strong. The full-time score at Carrow Road, Norwich City 2, Bolton 0. And the promoted sides continue to impress in the Premier League. Norwich have won and so have Swansea. Steve Lee. West Brom 1, Swansea 2, another away day to Birmingham, another away win for Swansea at the Hawthorns after their recent and only success in the Premier League at Villa. They exuded confidence in their day-glow orange shirts. Albion, by contrast, have won only twice at home all season in the Premier League, and it showed. Fortuna, though, did give them the lead just after the break, but such is the fragility of Albion at the Hawthorns that they conceded twice in ten minutes. First, Gilfie Sigerson steered home Taylor's cross, and then, mad of the match, Sigerson curled in across himself, converted by Danny Graham, his tenth of the season. West Brom got desperate at the end. Odin Wingy and Fortuny went close. Ben Foster even came into the attack, but it ended in another home league defeat. They haven't won at home here since November the 19th. West Brom won, Swansea two. Points are shared at Turf Moor. Burnley won Peterborough on Brighton, have beaten Leicester by a goal to nil. What a turnaround for Plymouth. They've uh, got a two-all draw against South End. That's Ian Holloway's former club, Plymouth. His current one did very well at Cardiff. Jason Mohammed. Mark, 11 days ago, this stadium was rocking when Cardiff City booked a Carling Cup final place. The same fans started leaving with seven minutes to go when the impressive Matt Phillips got the first of his two late goals. But it was the other Phillips boy, Kevin, who got them back into the game. His 11th goal of the season, another classic, chested down and into the top corner. Defensively, City went to pieces. But what a fight back from Ian Holloway's team. Cardiff City won Blackpool 3. Last time I did final score, I suggested that the game at Middlesbrough had been dull. I've got a whole load of tweets abusing me, so I'm not going to say anything this afternoon. Paul Addison can give you all the details on Middlesbrough against Crystal Palace. Yeah, I'll take the flak this time, shall I? Nil-nil here this afternoon and not a lot to write home about at all. Crystal Palace will feel that they should have won it. However, they had much the better of the chances, although they were few and far between. Wilfred Zaha, uh, the best player on the pitch by a mile. Borough's promotion push is stuttering a little bit. It's boxing day since they won, but Tony Mowbray, in fairness to him, is absolutely crippled by injury. The snow fell for most of the game. There were just under 60. 15,000 hardy souls here, and I bet half of them wish they hadn't bothered. Nil-nil. Definitely not dull at the Rico Arena this afternoon, although the home side fans would probably have taken a nil-nil. Steve May. But it's been very cold, I can tell you, uh, Mark. Uh, but it was Michael Chopra that got his second goal of the game, three minutes into stoppage time, that won this match for Paul Jill's team. Their second win in five days. Ipswich ahead through J. Emmanuel Thomas's third goal in two games. Coventry back in it with a penalty from Sammy Kling and after a handball from Sonko. Gary Deegan then squirted the ball through a number of players for Coventry's second before half-time. Ipswich deservedly getting the equaliser when Martin's penalty was saved and Michael Chopra was quickest to react. In fact, it's been Chopra's game. It's Coventry 2, Ipswich 3. As far as Leeds are concerned, Neil Redfern has found this management lark very easy this afternoon. Hamish Marshall. It's a great start for Neil Redfern, though he did see his side go ahead through Robert Snodgrass five minutes before the break, very much against the run of play. The home side were then reduced to nine men with the sendings off of James Wilson, a straight red, and Yannick Balassi for two yellows in two minutes. Ross McCormack with his third goal in three games, and Luciano Becchio put the icing on the cake. But Leeds and Redfern must thank keeper Andy Lonigan, who made three great saves to deny Bristol City when they'd 11 players in the first half. Bristol City nil, Leeds three. Speaking of denying people, Burnley got a late equaliser against Peterborough this afternoon. Richard Askin. Yes, Champions Jay Rodriguez turned a frustrating afternoon for Burnley. The homegrown striker with his 17th of the season, a lovely weaving run and finish late in the match. It followed countless chances that went begging for the Clarets. Chris McCann with the best of them. Peterborough clung on to their point at the end and deserved to for a first half performance where they made the running and scored through Paul Taylor, who smashed in a fine finish. Honours even at Turf Moor.
at Brighton this afternoon. There were more red cards than goals. Mark Bishop. Incredible match, Mark. Brighton won, Leicester City nil. Only Brighton's second home league win over Leicester in nine years. It was a highly charged second half. Three red cards. Jermaine Beckford got his marching orders first for his challenge on Dunk. Then Brighton also down to ten. Matt Sparrow with a two-footed lunge on Peltier. Sparrow had to go. Vincenti came off the bench to send over a great cross right to the far post. Buckley strokes it home. And then uh, deep into uh, stoppage time. This time it was Dan who got his uh, marching orders for a crew challenge on the edge of the penalty area. Leicester down to nine, Brighton down to ten, Brighton win by one goal to nil. OK, on to Watford Bars. The next home side may have lost their main striker at the end of the transfer window, but they got the three points today, Mark Webber. Indeed, Watford 2, Barnsley 1. Watford dominating for most of this game, but Barnsley in the second half making three substitutions and looking all the better for it. John Eustace's first goal, well-taken volley in a crowded box. The second was an easy tap-in, but Andy Gray got the consolation that they deserved with a shot deep on the left into the net. A six-man brawl at the end of the game. Hot stuff in the Hertfordshire chill. Watford 2. Barnsley won. Some sad news to tell you that's just reached us in the last half hour. Nottingham Forest have announced the death of the club's owner, Nigel Doughty. The 54-year-old was found dead earlier today in the gym at his home in Lincolnshire. A forest who are due to play Derby tomorrow are making no other comments. So some sad news there. Nigel Doughty, the Nottingham Forest owner, has passed away. This is Final Score on BBC Two. Mike West has the classifieds. Starting with the Barclays Premier League. Arsenal 7, Blackburn Rovers 1. Manchester City against Fulham is an evening kickoff at 5.30. Norwich City 2, Bolton Wanderers 0. Queen's Park Rangers 1, Wolverhampton Wanderers 2. Stoke City 0, Sunderland 1. West Bromwich Albion 1, Swansea City 2 and Wigan Athletic 1, Everton 1. In the Empire Championship, Birmingham City against Southampton is an evening kick-off at 5.20. Brighton and Hove Albion 1, Leicester City 0. Bristol City 0, Leeds United 3. Burnley 1, Peterborough United 1. Cardiff City 1, Blackpool 3. Coventry City 2, Ipswich Town 3. The match between Doncaster Rovers and Reading was postponed. Middlesbrough 0, Crystal Palace 0. Portsmouth against Hull City, match postponed. Watford 2, Barnsley 1. And West Ham United 2, Millwall 1. Just four games played in the Empire League 1. Carlisle United 2, Chesterfield 1. Huddersfield Town 1, Milton Keynes Dons 1, Sheffield Wednesday 2, Yeovil Town 1 and Wickham Wanderers 2, Tranmere Rovers 1. The rest of the matches were postponed. And just one game in the Empire League 2 today which finished Plymouth Argyle 2, Southend United 2. In the Blue Square Bet Premier a similar story, just one match today which finished Fleetwood Town 2, Tamworth 2. The Scottish Cup fifth round, Aberdeen 1, Queen of the South 1. The game between Air United and Falkirk, match postponed. Hibernian 1, Kilmarnock 0. Inverness Caledonian Thistle 0, Celtic 2. Motherwell 6, Greenock Morton 0. And St Mirren 1, Ross County 1. All the matches today, all five games in the Iron Brew Scottish Division 2 were postponed. In the Iron Brew Scottish Division 3, Berwick Rangers against Peterhead, match postponed. East Stirlingshire 2, Stranra 2. Elgin City against Clyde, also match postponed. Montrose 1, and an Athletic 1. And Queen's Park 1, Allower Athletic 2. In the Corbett Sports Welsh Premier, Ballatown against Clanethley, match postponed. Bangor City 1, Prestatyn Town 1 is a later score. Newtown against Carmarthen Town, match postponed. And the New Saints won, Neath 2. Finally, the Carling Premiership, Ballymena United 0, Cliftonville 1. The games between Donegal Celtic and Glentoran, 
and Dungannon Swift against Coleraine, both postponed. Glenavon 3, Carrick 2. Linfield 5, Crusaders 0. And Lisbon Distillery 0, Porter Down 2. Let's have a look at the tables then after those results today. Arsenal's thumping win against Blackburn moves them up to fifth and within two points now of the Champions League places. Manchester City, though, will look to open up a lead over Manchester United when they face Fulham in the tea time kickoff. Wolves' victory at Loftus Road lifts them out of the drop zone at the expense of Bolton, who suffered defeat at Norwich. Wigan's draw with Everton leaves them five points from safety. West Ham have opened up a five-point lead over Southampton, who visit Inform Birmingham in the early evening kickoff. Cardiff are now only two points clear of Blackpool, who beat them today. There were defeats for Coventry, Millwall and Bristol City in an unchanged bottom five. Nottingham Forest are due to play Derby tomorrow, although that game may be in doubt following the news we brought you earlier of the death of Forest club owner Nigel Doughty. Into League One, there were only four games in that division. Leaders Charlton among the sides who had their games postponed. Sheffield Wednesday move above Huddersfield today. Chesterfield are bottom after losing their game at Carlisle, coupled with a win for previously bottom Wickham. Southend were involved in the only League Two fixture to beat the freeze, but they couldn't beat struggling Plymouth. They were 2-0 up, but a draw moves them up to second. They will regard it as a missed opportunity to go back to the top of the table. As far as Plymouth are concerned, they remain second from bottom, but only a point from safety after coming from two goals down this afternoon. OK, let's get the headlines from the Premier League today. Zamora bags it to their billing as the Premier League's form team as James McLean's goal gives them victory against 10-man Stoke in tricky conditions at the Britannia. Norwich bag their first league win at home in four thanks to second-half goals from Sermon and Pilkington as Bolton fall back into the drop zone. And Achebe's equaliser spares Tim Howard's blushes after the Everton keeper is left bamboozled by Phil Neville's freak own goal. And Graham and Sigurdsson are on target for Swansea as they battle back against West Brom to grab only their second away win in the Premier League. And don't forget, you can see all those games on Match of the Day tonight at 10.20, along with Manchester City's game against Fulham, which kicks off in around 20 minutes' time. We can bring you all the reaction until half past five here on Final Scores this afternoon's games. Let's start at the DW Stadium. Guy Mowbray commentating on this game for match of the day. Have you seen a stranger own goal than the Phil Neville one, Guy? Uh, not, not recently, no. Uh, my, my producer Mitch is with me, likened it to Matt Pryor misreading spin and bounce on a flat track in Dubai. Yeah, he completely spun away from him, went in. It's not one he'll want to see again. Phil Neville intercepted a, a tame cross from Beausajour, basically, and it was coming towards Howard. He, he, he seemed to have it, and then it just spun away so viciously from him. And, uh, yeah, unlucky for him on that stage. I mean, he is one of the most reliable goalkeepers in the Premier League, generally, isn't he? And Everton swooped up eight minutes later. Victor and each of you flicking in a... An equalising goal. I think honours even about right overall. Although both teams look look pretty cheesed off about it all at the end. They both they both wanted three, obviously. I think you could have picked any number of England batsmen misreading spin, given the current situations <laughs> going on in the Test with Pakistan. And um, when you look uh, at the bottom of the table, with Wolves winning today, for example, a, a, po a point isn't really enough for Wigan, is it? No, it's not. You, you said it when you, when you went through the league tables. They are still five points away from safety. I tell you what, next Saturday now, you, you could argue it's one of the games of the day, Bolton away for Wigan. That is a huge game at the bottom of the Barclays Premier League. And, and that's an away game they've got to be winning. They've got two at home after that. I think it's Norwich and Swansea, again, or rather West Brom and Swansea. They've got to win those as well. So, um, yeah, they've got, they've got to start turning one points into three. I made the point in commentary, if they'd had this fixture in, say, October, November and drawn it home to Everton, they'd have gladly taken that, but not in the position that they're in. I thought in the first half, they were arguably just the brighter side, but, but same old failing. They, they didn't create any really clear,
clear chances and the few chances they did, they couldn't score a goal from. It needed a gift from Everton in the end and even that didn't prove enough. I've just thought of another similar one. England, again, it was a Neville ball back to the goalkeeper, <laughs> Paul Robinson. Similar sort of bounce but very different sort of goal. Yeah, in, in Croatia, wasn't it? That, I think, if memory yeah. serves uh, right. Um, as far as Everton are concerned, we, we talked pre-kick-off, didn't we, about what, how they would be in this game. How, how did the people they brought in, how did Pienaar do, how did Jelovic do? I thought Pienaar was very tidy and he slotted in as though he's, he'd never been away. Let's face it, the personnel hasn't changed that much. And Stephen Pienaar looked tidy, brought an efficiency to Everton's midfield. I thought he had, generally, a pretty decent game. Uh, Jelovic came on late on, Looks as though he's made for the Premier League. He's strong enough. He, he bustled about a little bit. Didn't give them anything in particular, but looked sharp. Looked as though there's a goal or two in him. And uh, what do you know? You look at the Everton bench, you think, who's going to come on and get them a goal? You'd think it's the day for Jelovic. And then Victor Anichabu, who's been out injured for much of the season. He struggled for starts throughout most of his Everton career. On he comes, perhaps the player that's going to be frozen out most by Jelovic's arrival. You never know in football, do you? He's the hero for Everton. You had a tonight. jumper on when we spoke to you pre-kick-off. You've now got a coat <laughs> on and gloves. That's very, very yeah. sensible. Go and get warm. Thank you, Guy. Yeah, thanks, Cheers. Mark. Thank you. Um, when we look at the bottom of the table, what a point for Wigan. Some people are saying 37, 38 points to stay up. I mean, they, they're going to have to get 21, 22 points out of their remaining 14 games. Yeah, won three games all season and uh, didn't do enough to win the game again today. You've got to look to your home games to try and put points on the table. And, uh, you know, it was it, both teams cancelled each other out this afternoon and, uh, and Wigan again just didn't have enough when he scored 20 goals all season. Martin? Yeah, I, I can't, honestly, this year, I can't see them pulling out of trouble. Got mm. out last year, didn't they? Almost the last kick of the season. And Martinez took the, could have taken the chance to go to Villa, didn't take it. And I think, really, they are struggling. They're gonna, looking like they're going to go down, for sure. Uh, the game of the day came at Loftus Road. QPR 1, Wolves 2. There was a sending off as well for one of Mark Hughes' new signings, Gibral Cisse. And here are the thoughts of Hughes. Well, Mark, how significant in the outcome of that game was the red card for Gibral Cissé? Well, it's obviously played a hand um, prior to the sending off. I thought we were in complete control of the game. We were playing some great stuff. Uh, we are 1-0 to the good and really looked like we could run away with the game. Uh, unfortunately, obviously, Gibral is... Oh, yeah, he, he looked puzzled at the end as well, <laughs> didn't he, Mark Hughes? Like, the answer that he was giving there was, before the sending off, they looked like they were on a bit of a roll. And that's a fair point. They were. And, but, you know, but listen, what we're going to look at is CeCe there being ill-disciplined. Not, I don't think it was a sending off, but you don't give the referee an opportunity to send you mm. off. Wolves were in a similar situation just a couple of weeks ago with Carl Henry getting sent off against Aston Villa. Their season then looked like it was over. That's given them a leg up. Suddenly they're back in the game and the second half Wolves puts uh, Doyle comes off the bench and they're a completely different team. But QPR gave a good account of themselves the last 10 minutes. Uh, Tarat was unbelievable. Yeah, was fantastic. Some fantastic touches, three mm -hmm. great efforts. So there's plenty. I think QPR will be OK. So the yeah. battle continues, but Mark will be disappointed with CeCe's reaction. Wolves need to start first halves in the future, like they started uh, that second yeah, half, we, don't we, they? We wondered whether the chairman had went in at <laughs> half-time and said something again, but <laughs> he got a reaction from his side. They were a completely different team from what they were first half. Obviously, the sending off makes a difference. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, peppered the, uh, the QPR uh, box with, with crosses, good quality crosses, and got the rewards for them. So, uh, you know, you've got to put a 90 minutes together to, such a shame to get himself for, out the trouble they're in. Such a shame for QPR, wasn't yeah. it? Because they did start the game so very well. So, yeah. got to start again. That's three tomorrow, games he's yeah. going to be out Especially, for as well. Yeah. There is one man at the moment thinking, will these two please shut up? Let me give you a definition of cold. Look at this. Not wrong. <laughs> Goodness, are you surprised, Not Steve? Not like to go on, is it? Are, are you surprised that, that the game went on, Steve, at Stoke? I su wasn't surprised it started, but I'll tell you what, Mark, at, at times in the second half, I wondered whether it was going to finish. It must have been touch and go, particularly down the flanks uh, here in the second half. The ball was holding up. And actually, I just nipped down and had a quick look um, before coming up to speak to you guys. And there was a good two or three inches of snow drifting uh, towards that touchline. At half-time, all the grand staff were out 
um, making sure the lines were visible again, putting extra blue paint on. But I was also waiting for a questionable uh, challenge on an edge of a penalty area and someone trying to tell the referee or anyone in the ground whether it was inside the penalty area or not because I defy them to do so because there's no way that they could have seen a line or whether a cross had uh, come in and a goal had been scored and whether it was over the line or not. And we were struggling to see some of the players at the end, um, let alone the players looking for their teammates. So they just about got there. Um, but uh, on another day, this could easily not have finished. Questionable challenges. Do you think the conditions had any part to play in, in Robert Hooth's challenge? And do you think it was a red? I must admit, at the time, I thought the only reason that Martin Atkinson would have sent him off is because he led with his studs. And then when I saw that he didn't, I think it was a, a lack of sensibility, really. Very, very harsh red card. Tony Pulis definitely shares that opinion. He went absolutely bananas on the touchline. Um, it was one of those days, like you say, with the conditions where you've got to realise, yes, he was le late. Yes, it was a free kick. It was probably a yellow card uh, and then move on. And so Robert Huth was, was very, very unfortunate. That was a game-changing decision. And do you know what? In the second half, there was an even more bizarre incident for me when John O'Shea shoulder barged a Stoke City player um, and the two guys sitting next to you if they'd seen it and um, they used to do that all the time not only did Martin Atkinson give a free kick he actually booked John O'Shea for the challenge and that to me perhaps in his own mind maybe he'd realised that he'd made an error in sending Robert Huth off but it did it did change the game and, and credit Sunderland because it became a little farcical in the second half but one piece of composure from James McLean who's some story because eight months ago he was playing in the electricity league for Derry City he was bought in by Steve Bruce we have to make that um, observation and he was waiting his time in the reserves Martin O'Neill in his first week in the job watched the reserve game and asked somebody who the number 11 was it was James McLean he was in the first team he scored three goals since his second in the Premier League today and he's won another game for Martin O'Neill 22 points from 30 since arriving at the Stadium of Light it is remarkable and as far as he's concerned that run goes on today and, and just quickly did they look like a side who won the, the five out of their last six and the top of the Premier League form table and are now eight Difficult to, to really um, give any guidance on that, given the conditions, because as I say, in the second half, it became farcical. They had a man advantage. They dug deep at the end. Um, it's another clean sheet as well, um, because Stoke you know, put those balls in the box. Um, Peter Crouch was in there. Uh, Ricardo Fuller was in there. So too was Shawcross at the end. But yes, you, you could see at times the momentum was certainly there. The confidence is there, the way they were holding the ball uh, and running the clock down. And they've got the real momentum about them. And as I say, it's an incredible run. Um, 17th position when Martin and Neil walked through the door. Top eight for the first time this season and back-to-back -back wins. In fact, they've won three games in the Premier League in a row since the first time since April 2008. It's Sunderland's day. I can't tell whether that's steam coming off your head or the snow in the background, <laughs> but thank you very much, <laughs> Steve. Uh, a very cold Britannia. May, uh, just let me point you, by the way, in the direction of uh, Football Focus next Saturday because the whole of the programme is coming live from the Stadium of Light next Saturday with Dan 12.15. Maybe, you know, earlier when we were talking about the difference between... Steve Bruce and Martin O'Neill. Maybe the how he's, James McLean has, has been treated sums it up that he, he puts a round peg in a round hole rather than trying to mix and match. Yeah, I think we talked before about, you know, that they say that Martin O'Neill's style of management is all about his the way he looks after his players, the way he you know he, he talks to them, he gets the very best out of them, he makes them believe that they're good players. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a case in question with McLean. His goal today was 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 top class, it was all about power and desire. Uh, drives into the penalty box and a great clinical finish to get them the, get them the three points. He's, he's galvanised the side. Uh, it's a different Sunderland at the moment. And yeah. uh, they've had to put in an unbelievable shift today to get a result at Stoke. I mean, in defence of Steve Bruce, these are all his signings, aren't they? Mm. But Martin O'Neill, I mean, the X factor he seems to bring to the table. I mean, he seems to... They talk about how he keeps it simple with the players and makes them feel like a million dollars. And that's simply all he's doing. His man management is, is second to none. I mean, it's astonishing. They're only five points now behind Newcastle and what a season they're having. So it really is a major turnaround and they're just going from strength to strength. And McLean is really... He typifies the change that's taken place there. So, I would say fair play to that assistant referee in the shot there who had short sleeves on and no gloves of the Britannia. He really is a, a tough nut. In the early game in the Premier League, it finished Arsenal 7, Blackburn 1 at the Emirates. Hat-trick for Robbie Van Persie. There were two for Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain and afterwards he spoke to Phil White. Well, Alex, how close to the perfect day for Arsenal and for you was today? Yeah, you know, we had to uh, bounce back after 
Bolton, and obviously we created a lot of chances there, and uh, didn't convert. So today it was we all knew it was important to take our chances, and I think by by the scoreline we did that. Was there a pressure to win this game? Um, there's a pressure to win every game, you know. It's Arsenal Football Club, and we're, we're trying to do as well as we can in the title chase. So we've, we know we've got to win every game. So yeah, there's always pressure. But bearing in mind the tough matches, particularly difficult matches you have coming up, I suppose three points today is a real step in the right direction because you needed to get a league win this year, of course. Yeah, definitely. It was a, it was a positive step in the right direction, as you said, and uh, we can definitely build on this and push on. And for yourself, first couple of Premier League goals, just uh, reflect on that for me. Yeah, obviously, it's always nice to get on the goal sheet uh, and. Um, Obviously, in the Premier League, I've been waiting for, for a day like this and obviously to get two as well at the same time, it's very nice. So, you know, I'm really happy, but it's more about the team and uh, the fact that we got three points and did it in good, good fashion. That's a big positive step for us. That was the early game in the Premier League. The early game in the Championship was a derby. The leaders, West Ham, took on Millwall at Upton Park. Here's the best of the action with John Roder. A valuable win for the leaders in the Proper. aftermath of that midweek thrashing at Ipswich, all the more so after the early That's sending off in. of captain Kevin Nolan. It was a no, two-footed tackle, there. a player That's of his experience right. should know better. Kevin Nolan is dismissed. And West Ham are down to ten men after just eight minutes. Here's the challenge again, and Kevin Nolan jumping in. The challenge on Jack Smith. Noble will take the free kick. Driven in hard. Reed. Cole! West Ham lead in stoppage time at the end of the first half. And Carlton Cole gets it. Carlton Cole gets his ninth goal of the season. And West Ham lead in this London derby. West Ham 1, Millwall 0. West Ham with a bank of four in defence and four in midfield and Millwall are finding it hard to find a way through Trotter looks for a way through and has found one it's the equaliser for Millwall and Liam Trotter has got it good hold up play from Henderson and that's a fine finish from Liam Trotter this time looking for an immediate response so having conceded and they almost get one Clear by Kane. Tompkins with the effort. Faubert going in. Ford gets it away. Reed! Winston Reed fires West Ham back in front. David Ford, the Millwall goalkeeper, is still down on the ground after the challenge here by Faubert. West Ham 2, Millwall 1. What are you saying, Gary? You're, say you're saying you thought that was a foul? I, I think that's a foul yeah. on the keeper. He looks at the keeper, he knows exactly what he's doing. He's going to climb into him and knock him down. And uh, he's, he's not allowed, you know, he can't get up in time to try and save the, save the, the shot after that. So for me, that's a foul and, and a free kick. It's been missed, and it, was, it was, certainly didn't miss the challenge from Nolan, did he? What, I mean, oh, we talked, that seen, was a red card, that wasn't was it? A red yeah. card, yeah. We've seen a few today. I mean, Hoof, mm. we're talking about for Stoke, we don't think that was a, anywhere near a sending off, but certainly Nolan was today. Uh, West Ham, five points clear at the top of the table. Southampton playing in the early evening game at Birmingham. They might debut the Ricky Lambert, uh, Billy Sharp partnership at uh, St Andrews against that. They haven't, I'm just being told. Billy Sharp's on the bench, so that's the end of that link. Right, <laughs> Cardiff against Blackpool. Next, let's see the goals from this. This is a lot more simple. Nua Dicko is quick and Dicko is onside here. Can the Frenchman keep a cool head? On such moments, the big match is hinged. Dicko broke the offside trap, just needed a cool head. Instead, it was a rush of blood. Across was from Taylor, Cowie, and in! Super substitute, Joe Mason! Matt Phillips, it's deep to the far post. Oh, it was a poor punch, though, by Marshall. And the shot from Phillips! Kevin Phillips does what only he knows how to do best! Here is Bednar. Bednar goes to goal. It's half stopped. Matt Phillips is onside. Matt Phillips blocked again by Butwell. Phillips again! 
Matt Phillips, has he won it for Blackpool? It's the Phillips double act here. The half volley was sweet, it was assured, and it left David Marshall rooted to the spot. It's Cardiff City 1, Blackpool 2. What a turnaround. And onside is Matt Phillips, and Matt Phillips took it beautifully, and Matt Phillips has scored again for Blackpool! It's a wonder away show by Ian Holloway's side. Look at Matt Phillips. He had so much to do. He got away from Taylor and then picked his spot. More from that game and every goal from the Football League with Manish from 11.40 straight after match of the day with Gary and the team. So that's 11.40 is the Football League show. There might be live football tomorrow. Derby against Nottingham Forest. And then there's Six Nations. Half past two tomorrow afternoon. Ireland against Wales. Scotland against England, of course, on BBC One now, if you want to watch that. Here on BBC Two, more reaction to the games, uh, the day's games. And we'll go next to Loftus Road. QPR 1, Wolves 2, vital three points for Mick McCarthy. Here he is. Mick, how big a win? It's huge, isn't it? I mean, uh, everybody was there yesterday at my press conference and stressing the importance of, of this game. Uh, so, based on the back of all that and... Uh, you know, the stuff that went on in midweek and the headlines that we were getting for the wrong reasons. Uh, it was a, a fabulous response. We got a bit of luck with the sending off. You know, it was a booking, Roger. It wasn't a nice tackle, but it, that's what it was, a booking. Uh, you know, I don't like those sendings off, I have to be honest, but we've had them. It's uh, sometimes you get a bit of good fortune by a bad decision on the opposite way or... Well, I'm not saying it's a bad decision. It's, they're the rules now. You can't do it. Uh, a bad decision by the player to get involved and do it. Uh, and it turned it round for us because, you know, our extra man paid dividends in the second half. How significant was the role that you asked Kevin Doyle and Sylvain Ebanks Blake to play in the second half, Mick? Very significant. Uh, I, I changed it, I, I took Steers off. He's been so unlucky, he's been a, a real warrior for me, centre half, right back, wherever he plays. Uh, but I just needed a full back there. Kev Foley, who gets forward better than Doyle. You know, we give him a licence to roam around a bit and I think he, he he looked like the top player that he is. Uh, he looks strong and powerful and skillful, and he's been having it tough, so for him to get his goal, I'm really thrilled for him. It was, it, it's an honest interview, that, isn't it, Gary? Mm. It is, and it, it was such a huge game for him today, especially you know after they did go down to 10 minutes, they'd lost the game, the pressure would have really mounted. I thought his players handled, it, handled the pressure really well. Obviously, Mick's handled it. Really well, and, he, and he's honest there in his assessment of the sending off. He doesn't think, in his time, he wouldn't have expected to be sent off for that. There's certainly a, He'd have done a lot worse in his time and maybe not even got a booking for it, but that changed the game. And, um, you know, second half, Wolves deserved the victory. And that's probably the result of the day, Martin. Yeah, so much more positive in that second half. Stephen Doyle coming off, Stephen, of course, going off, but uh, no, good day for Mick McCarthy. OK, you can have your say on 6.06 tonight. I'll be on from 7 on 5 Live after the rugby with Jason Roberts. And uh, that's it from us. Still half an hour's more reaction to come, so press your red button for that. Or if you want to flick over to BBC One, you can catch Scotland against England, which is approaching half-time. We'll be back on the BBC HD channel from 2.30 next Saturday. Bye-bye.